Hi everyone, I'm Simon Danucci and I've just passed the brand new 2021 version of the CI SSP exam. The exam was upgraded and introduced on the 1st of May, so that makes me one of the first people to pass it. Uh, and I, that was by accident, I hadn't intended to take the new version. Uh, I booked my exam and then I'd had to delay it and it was only after I'd rebooked it for the middle of May that I discovered that the, uh, the curriculum had gone through a major change. So I had to do some extra revision. Now, there is an official guide that uh, goes through the domain changes for all eight domains. Uh, and here you can see uh, an example of domain two. So there's the old version with the, the gray heading and there's the new version with the green heading. Um, but all you get uh, in this document uh, is a comparison of the old and the new subdomain headings. There's not a lot of information in there. So that's that's domain two. But if we go to the official um, curriculum, this is domain two. Uh, and as you can see, there's a lot more detail in this document. Uh, and I've been through this entire document, all eight domains. And in pink highlighter, you can see all the new material, all the stuff that has changed. So there have actually been quite a lot of changes in domain two. Uh, and in fact, in all, the, in all the other domains as well. So if we look, not so much apparently in six, quite a lot in seven. So, but there's changes to all but one of the domains. Um, in the new version and it was quite a lot of extra revision quite a lot of extra work to do to get ready for the new version of the exam so what i did from that was that i went through a whole bunch of stuff uh, in order to work out the extra revision i need to do and now i've recorded this in a course for you to save you a lot of the effort that i had to go through Okay, so let's see what we've got in the course. Hello, and welcome to this course on the changes to the Certified Information Systems Security Professional course. Now, CISSP has been around for quite some time, and the previous version of the course syllabus was established in April 2018, and that was the, the version that I was taught. Um, but only just recently, as of the 1st of May this year, the exam, ha uh, so the syllabus and the exam have undergone a significant upgrade. And uh, in this course, I'm going to go through all of that material for you and show you what has changed in detail to help you with your revision. So in this brief introduction, I'm just going to give you an overview of what's changed and how uh, this material has been developed for you. OK. So in the course, we're going to cover all eight domains from security and risk management all the way through to software development security okay so there's a it's cissp is a very broad course and it covers all sorts of things like physical security uh, and fire prevention uh, right through to some uh, more detailed technical stuff on the workings of the internet and logging on and stuff like that and some software development and security testing as well. So there's a really broad range of material there. And uh, in this exam, or sorry, in the new version of the syllabus, there are still eight domains. And overall, those domains uh, haven't really changed. Domains one, three, and seven are still broader than the others. They're, they're really very broad. Some of the domains are a bit narrower in theory, but we'll, we'll see. Um, so there are still eight domains. The weighting between the 
the different domains in the exam has only changed slightly. So one domain has gone down 1% and another has increased by 1%, but it's, it's a very slight change. But there have been significant changes to all of those domains except number one. Uh, there's a small change to number one, as we will see, um, but it's not huge. But domains two to seven have all gone, undergone significant changes. Now, having said that, some of those changes were already in the uh, course material because I did the I uh, did an official CISSP five day course in 2019, and some of these new changes were already in that material, and some of them were already in the study guide and some were already in the official practice tests okay so um, i've marked throughout the course i've marked some of these things as aoc for already in the official course okay um but they uh, but they're now officially in the syllabus and are required and but perhaps going to be emphasized more than previously. We shall see. Okay. So if we have a brief look at domains two to seven, we see that in domain two, the major changes, um, the resource types are now listed that we, the resources that we need to protect and the different data activities and the data life cycle are now listed so we've got more detail in those two areas but as i say those were already in the official material that you may have seen prior to first of may in domain three we've got some big changes we now have under architectures and designs and solutions we now have 14 designs or solutions listed out okay 50 percent of which are completely new and we now have 13 crypto analytic attacks listed okay some of those were already talked about in the material um, but a lot are new if we move on to domain four we've got several new network architect architectures sorry listed uh, most of whom are actually wireless, so that should be a surprise to nobody. Um, technology has moved on and so has Domain 4. In Domain 5, we've got uh, additions to all the existing subdomains and we have a new subdomain on authentication systems. In Domain 6, we have more detail on security test output and reporting. You know, what do we, you know, we, we do the security test, what do we do with the findings? What are the implications? Um, D7, we have some relatively minor changes, but there are changes to six out of 15 of the subdomains. So there's, there's some new stuff spread about domain seven. And then in domain eight, we've got a significant change because we have more detail has been added to all the subdomains. So in domains two to eight, we have significant changes to all of those domains. And just a little note that uh, they seem to be adding um, more acronyms everywhere. So um, there are already quite a few acronyms to learn but now we've added some more to a quite a lengthy list. So plenty, plenty to do there. Okay, so that's an overview of the, the seven domains that have changed significantly. I just wanted to let you know what I've done in order to come up with this course, just so that you know and you can form your own judgment. So I've been through the CISSP official study guide, which you, you get uh, with the course. Um, so the face-to-face -face course cost um, 3,700 Australian dollars. I think that's about two and a half thousand dollars US. Uh, uh, hundreds of slides we went through every day for five days 
and you get a course guide with it which is 800 pages long it's a it's a real tome uh, lots of good material in there an awful lot to learn then in addition uh, i've also been through the official student guide uh, which is a thousand pages and contains quite a lot of material that wasn't in the official course so um, that's worth getting and studying in some detail if you want to pass the exam that will really help you and then there's the CISSP glossary uh, which is about 50 pages and that's got over 400 definitions in it the glossary is not so much use it seems to be quite out of date to me there's a lot of um, definitions in there that um, you don't need and quite a few you do need that are simply not in there um, but I think it's worth mentioning the official study guide and especially the official student guide because there's a list of, again, over 50 references um, that the, uh, the CISSP um, uh, organisation uh, recommend that you read. You're not going to read. 50 books and standards. I mean, you know, just the first two are 1800 pages. Um, so it, it, it's an enormous hill to climb without some guidance to help you know where to look. Um, and in fact, I've tried to include page numbers for the official student guide where it covers the material we're going to talk about. Okay. But even the student guide doesn't cover everything that we're going to hear about. So I've had to go on the internet and look up information to show you where to get started on these new topics. And we've got external quotes in quotation marks where there is no information or not enough useful information discoverable in the resources on this slide. And I say discoverable because they're in a thousand pages of content. Um, you can sometimes be reading through the student guide and discover things that weren't listed in the index. So some of these topics, I've been through the index trying to find them and I've not always been successful, but that doesn't mean the information isn't in the student guide. You just have to plow through large parts of it in order to find useful detail. Um, but it is there. It's a really good book. Um, highly recommend you get it. I think it's 70 US dollars. So compared to two and a half thousand dollars for the course, it's really excellent value. Uh, and I would say you can't do without it. Another resource I would recommend are the official practice questions. Um, and in that book, that's 40 US dollars. There are over 1100 practice questions in there. OK, so that's another really useful resource when you're preparing for the exam. OK, so that's the introduction to the course. Uh, let's move straight on to domain one.